ever been at a busy airport and wondered how all those airplanes don't end up bumping into each other up there? If you're a pilot, you'll be familiar with the various classes of airspace and levels of air traffic control that you can make use of. The Sport Pilot TV team decided to find out more about the airspace surrounding most of the busiest airports in the country. Class B airspace is the domain of the heavy eye. And to make sure no one gets too close to anyone else, and to help you if you ever need to move through Class B, are the Tracon controllers. Caesar Matos is a 30-year ATC veteran and operations supervisor of the Miami Tracon, located at Miami International Airport. The Tracon is, uh, it stands for Terminal Radar Approach Control Facility. What we do is we separate aircraft uh, by using uh, radar, um, and we sequence the aircraft for arrival so that we can hand them off to the tower on final approach control. Uh, we provide uh, radar to the uh, instrument approaches, for example. Um, and we also get the uh, aircraft, as they come off the different airports, uh, they are identified and then we provide the radar separation until they go out on their, on their different gates and hand it off to the uh, center. Geographically, we are responsible for the uh, separation of traffic from approximately Boca, which is at the very northern uh, edge of our airspace, which is, if you look at the scope, I don't know if you could see it, but that, uh, that solid line really it, it is, is our airspace. And at the very top, at the very limit, uh, is Boca. And if you look down here, that's Key Largo. Uh, so from Homestead Air Force Base all the way to Pompano, we actually separate uh, aircraft. And our airspace also goes from the surface to 16,000 feet. We have 14 scopes in our Tracon, and uh, you can manipulate it, and, and if you're working in a southern sector, you can blow up that sector. But basically, that is actually a very uh, typical presentation of what the controllers are seeing. Um, for example, uh, as you can see, the, the uh, coastline and Biscayne Bay, uh, right, I'll use, well, I'll use my fingers. You may not be able to see our cursor. Um, but right down here is Tamiami Airport, and the uh, dash line is the final approach course for the ILS-29 right at Tamiami. Down here in the center of the scope is Miami International Airport, and the dash lines are also, since we're in an east operation today, are the dash lines for those instrument approaches going into runway 9, 8 left, 8 right, or 12. Uh, Opalaka Airport up above that, North Perry. Fort Lauderdale International Airport is up here again with the approaches for an east operation. Lauderdale Executive and Pompano Air Park. A lot of viewers may fly, say, the sport pilot or LSA type aircraft, may have some apprehensions about flying into Class B airspace. Can you maybe give them a bit of an idea how easy it is if you prepare for yourself in this kind of flight? Class Bravo, uh, the B should stand for busy. If you have Class Bravo, it's going to be a busy area. Um, but it, it should, this really is it's manageable. Uh, the, the difference, obviously, is... Um, you need to hear the uh, words clear into the class Bravo as opposed to class Charlie and class Delta. In those cases, just establishing communication is good enough to go ahead and, and, and continue. On the class Bravo, there are different requirements that the controller has to do. We're actually going to separate the aircraft inside that airspace. So uh, being that it's busy already with IFR aircraft that we're working, whether they be airliners or taxi, whatever, you may or may not get a clearance into the class Bravo airspace, and you need to hear the words cleared into it before you can get in there. I have a little technique that I that I use works well whether I'm working behind the scope or in the cockpit, um, and I and whether it's the class Bravo airspace or whatever the case may be from a radar facility. If I want to receive radar services, whether I'm traveling on a cross country and would like to get flight following, which I think is one of the best services any pilot can get um, if you're on a VFR flight, or getting practice instrument approaches, whatever the case may be that you need to establish communication with the radar controller. I usually will call up and say, like, you know, Miami approach, uh, Cessna 12345, uh, control. The controller will come back, and now I have his attention. I mean, I, I know that sometimes uh, I've, I've even seen being taught to say everything on initial contact. But when you're talk, working in a Class Bravo airspace, that controller is usually pretty busy and is not really ready to take all that information the first time. So you'll end up repeating yourself, and he'll be end up asking you again and playing 20 questions. Now, I don't mind repeating myself in the cockpit, but it, you're using up very usable frequency time. So uh, usually I will just call up and say who I am and let the controller come back and answer me. And now he's waiting to 
hear what I have to say. 300 feet directly above the Miami Airport Tracon Center is the control tower. From this commanding view of Miami International Airport, these controllers make decisions that every second ensure the safety of many hundreds of people in airplanes. This view adds a whole new meaning to seeing the big picture. Tower controllers are responsible for separation of runways. How do we pass information between the Traken and the tower? Nowadays, it's done through automation. Uh, we have uh, in the tower displays that the, air, the next aircraft coming down the final, the uh, controller can actually just look up and see who the aircraft is. It has the type, it has uh, the speed, it has the altitude, it has the type of approach that he's going to be on. So there's no surprise thing to, especially in a facility of this kind, what the next arrival is doing and who is going to be. That's how the, the information goes from the Tracon to the tower. And then from the tower to the Tracon, we have scanners. As we scan them up in the tower cab here, they'll print out next to the radar controller's position. And that way he knows who the next aircraft is going going to be uh, airborne and then um, once it tags up on the scope and calls him, he's ready for them and, and has a uh, plan of what to do with them. The tower controllers are going to be talking to you and are going to be responsible for you pretty much within that five mile or you know, four mile class delta airspace and then the radar facility will take you outside of that. Actually, this is our new control tower, um, and the view is its really phenomenal. Uh, looking out east, you can see downtown Miami and the beaches out there. It's quite an improvement over the other one. As you can see, we have three parallel runways that go east and west. Uh, we're on east operation today. On this type of operation, we normally land on the outer runways, which is eight left, and then to the south is runway nine. And that way, it gives us an option to depart on the diagonal runway 12 if there's for southbounders or depart on 8 right if you're going north. It's a pretty efficient and also safe operation. You're an aviator yourself, you mentioned. It would be interesting for the viewers to know that many controllers are pilots themselves, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of the air traffic controllers, uh, I mean, the reason we're here is we, we love aviation and, and it's hard to love aviation and not find yourself flying the airplane most of the time. So.